Look up one night, and surprise, it's not the moon, but a giant planet. Swap the moon with Pluto, Mars, or even Jupiter, and Earth's tides, tilt, and climate go haywire. The result? Chaos, killer waves, and creative new ways for humanity to go extinct. Pluto, the tiny understudy of doom. Pluto would appear as a little dim smudge instead of our moon, only two-thirds the moon's diameter, bearing frosty nitrogen ices. With only about one-sixth the moon's mass, its gravity is puny. Tides would virtually vanish, no epic high tides here, and Earth's spin would stop slowing so much, days stay short. But losing the moon's heft would unshackle our axis. Without the moon to lock in, Earth's tilt, our seasons start wobbling like crazy. Over decades, the tilt might swing wildly. Think 15 degrees, 45 degrees swings, tossing us into repeated mini ice ages and runaway summers. In short, climate goes feral. As for human deaths, maybe not by tsunamis, but by glaciation and dehydration. Crops fail, and civilizations collapse because seasons flip unpredictably. On the bright side, or not, astronomers now have pitch black skies perfect for stargazing. If only we weren't all frozen or dead. Mercury, the fiery backyard charcoal. In place of the moon, Mercury would loom only a bit larger. Its 2,440 kilometers diameter makes it about 1.4 times the moon's apparent size. It looked like a pitted, sun-bleached gray orb, maybe glowing orange by reflected sunlight. Mercury is only 4.5 times the moon's mass, so expect 4 to 5 times stronger tidal bulges. Oceans would ride enormous tidal waves. Imagine 10 to 20 meter super waves sloshing twice a day. Earth's crust would flex, triggering mega earthquakes and volcanoes with every orbit. Planetary rotation would start to drag, our days would lengthen as Mercury's tug gradually slows Earth. Climate-wise, Mercury has no atmosphere and extreme temperatures. Our skies wouldn't heat by Mercury itself, but its presence could tweak Earth's seasons and even tilt. Worst of all, Mercury bakes and freezes in half-orbits. If Mercury happens to face the sun when over your city, nights turn into a blistering furnace, since the sunward side of Mercury would essentially act as a second nearby sun. When its night side faces us, it might actually deliver a cryogenic blast. Humans get roasted, starved, or chilled to death. Imagine camping one night under moonlight only to find yourself in an impromptu hellish barbecue. On the bright side, at least our electric bills plummet. Mercury's glare turns every night into dusk, so who needs lights? Also, surprise sunscreen shortage. Mars. The big red nightlight. Mars in the sky would be a reddish disk about twice as wide as the moon's. Mars is 0.532 Earth radius, makes it approximately two times our moon's apparent diameter. Its dusty deserts and polar cap might even be faintly visible as crimson pattern, with approximately nine times the moon's mass. Martian tides would be colossal, seawater bulges an order of magnitude bigger. Coastal cities would drown under tsunami-like tides that surge and recede with frightening force. Earth's rotation would break much harder. Days slow and nights lengthen over millennia. Mars has a thin carbon dioxide atmosphere at minus 60 degrees Celsius, average, so it won't heat our world, but its gravity could still alter climate. Possibly Earth's axis shifts a bit, triggering stronger seasons. The human death toll. Imagine a monstrous high tide swallowing Miami, then a dead calm as water retreats, stranding ships and ships of refugees. Even inland, crustal stress from tidal flexing will trigger earthquakes and volcanoes. People barbecued by lava flows or buried under rupturing cities. Surfers die on 100-foot waves. Farmers choke on Martian dust blown into our air. And if Earth somehow tidally locks one face to Mars over eons, one hemisphere fries under constant red sky while the other freezes in prolonged night. On the ironic bright side, those who always wanted to live on Mars need only pack a coat. Earth is now your neighbor. And amateur astronomers, if any left, also sunscreen companies will still see demand. Mars's dusty glow means you'll still tan unpredictably. Venus. The nightlight that melts your face. Look up and instead of a silvery moon, you'd see a glowing yellow-white disk much bigger. Venus's radius is 0.95 Earths, so at lunar distance it spans about 3.5 times the moon's diameter. It would shine as a blinding super Venus, practically daylight at midnight. Venus's gravity is 66 times the moon's, so ocean bulges shoot through the roof. Tides become apocalyptic, kilometers-high supertides that drown continents twice per orbit. 
Earthquakes and super volcanoes erupt as our crust flexes catastrophically. Venus is a greenhouse inferno, a world of intense heat and crushing atmospheric pressure. Its presence means Earth's night side is bathed in deadly infrared. Constant bright heat would literally bake one face of Earth. If rotation slows or locks to molten lava, the atmosphere might go into overdrive. Acid rains, runaway greenhouse, sulfuric storms. People will literally melt. Survivors, who make it to shelters, still roast as global temperatures spike, even without locking. That blazing globe shrivels ozone and cooks ecosystem. There's no fun death, just all-encompassing doom. Ironically, looking on the bright side, humans wouldn't need nightlights anymore. Night is as bright as day, and suntan lotions will have record sales. Also, no more seasonal affective disorder. It'd always be glaringly sunny and equally deadly every night. Neptune, the icy blue death orb. Neptune would appear as a huge cobalt blue disk, about 7 to 8 degrees across, 15 times the moon's angular size. Its swirling white clouds might be faintly visible to the naked eye. With 1,394 times the moon's mass, Neptune's tides would be monstrous. Picture mile-high superwaves thrashing our shores twice a day. Earth's tilt would likely shift to follow Neptune's pull, unleashing wild climate swing. Neptune is freezing cold. At one bar, its temperature is about minus 201 degrees Celsius, and it's mostly hydrogen helium, with some methane making it blue. Having Neptune over us doesn't warm Earth. If anything, its presence would block sunlight during part of orbit and pour in cosmic rays from its magnetosphere. Human deaths would come fast. The thrashing tides drown billions. Climate chaos follows. Ice ages with sudden deep freezes, alternating with brief warm spells. And because Neptune's gravity is so strong, Earth's core might strain and fissure, triggering global earthquakes. One delight. Those wild neon sky views. Okay, that's not a positive. The only real silver lining is that beach vacations become extreme sports, surfing glacier waves. But in reality, Neptune's arrival means Earth becomes an icy ship in a cosmic storm. Crew on deck getting soaked in hypothermic. Goodbye shorelines and salmon. Uranus. The sideways gas green giant. The sky would sport a pale blue-green ball. Uranus is 25,362 kilometers radius, makes it about 14.6 times the moon in angular diameter, nearly 7.5 degrees across. Its faint rings, thick and dark, as NASA notes, would stretch tens of degrees across the sky like cosmic opera blinds, because Uranus is approximately 1,181 times the moon's mass. Expect tidal horrors, similar to Neptune's. Earth's ocean surging in skyscrapers swells every half-rotation. Our spin would decelerate, and Earth might eventually get locked, presenting one face to Uranus. Uranus rotates on its side, tilted approximately 98 degrees, which means seasons could get truly nuts if its gravity torques Earth. One pole might point sunward for decades. People on one half of Earth may bake, while the other half freezes. Deaths would be poetic. Whole continents drown under under relentless tidal walls, surviving millions freeze or starve when their region tips into eternal night. Lurking behind the joke about Uranus and our butts, there'd be no laughing. And yes, jokes on newscasters would become painfully literal. Uranus is coming, but actual news would be humans suffocated by unpredictable, sideways seasons. At least you can say you lived through something unique. Saturn the ringed wrecker. Saturn would dominate the sky as a golden globe surrounded by vast icy rings. Its diameter is 120,536 kilometers, about nine times Earth's roughly 34 degrees across. And its rings stretch even wider, tens of degrees in our sky. From Earth's surface, you'd see a stunning disk with bands and shadowy rings. A sky watcher's dream. But Saturn is 7,735 times as massive as the moon. So tidal cataclysms arrive on steroids. Smaller ports might as well be abandoned swamps. Saturn's rings and many moons add extra terror. Jumbled ice rock from the rings would periodically rain down, peppering the atmosphere with meteoroids. Earth could experience nightly light shows and sonic booms as ring debris slams into us like hail. Titan-sized moonlets might be tugged loose and tumble toward Earth as flaming projectiles. Meanwhile, Saturn's tilt is approximately 27 degrees, similar to Earth's. But its sheer mass would twist Earth's spin axis unpredictably as it orbits overhead. Needless to say, humanity dies hard. People drown in deadly tidal floods. Superstorms of methane, acid rain from ring dust, and volcanic super-eruptions triggered by Saturn's grip. 
We'd also bake from endless static electricity and lightning. Saturn's storms produce violent lightning bolts that, with Saturn overhead, would occasionally arc down to Earth, electrocuting everyone near metal. Best case scenario, we all get frozen under a new ice age. Worst case, Saturn tidally locks Earth so one hemisphere is an uninhabitable day, the other an uninhabitable night. On the plus side, New Age music sells out, since ring patterns are perfect fractal. Jupiter, the gargantuan cosmic tyrant, Jupiter in our sky, would be beyond huge, about 11 times wider than Earth. Covering much of the sky, its swirling bands of red, white, and brown would dwarf anything we know, and you could maybe see its great red spot, a storm larger than Earth. Jupiter's 318 Earth masses make it 25,839 times more massive than the Moon. Every mountain range and tectonic fault line would bulge and break, causing apocalyptic earthquakes and tsunamis around the clock. Earth's rotation would torque to a crawl, possibly stopping altogether, causing permanent day on one side. The climate impact is unimaginable. Without rotation, one hemisphere would roast under constant sun and sunlight from shiny Jupiter. The other freeze in endless night. Earth's tilt could even flip. Imagine seasons reversed or chaotic. Human death would be instantaneous. In total, Earth's crust would tear apart, spewing magma into the sky. Ocean trenches become walls. Cities vanish under walls of water. Taller than Everest. And that's just the gravitation. Jupiter's radiation belts alone would irradiate Earth to unlivable levels. Imagine we have no skin or protection out in the open. Back on the surface, anyone outdoors for hours would get acute radiation sickness from those protons. The upper atmosphere might heat from friction with Jupiter's magnetosphere. On the absurd, darkly comedic side, at least if Jupiter devours Earth, we can stop worrying about climate change and pay tribute to new deities. We could also brag about having not one but four new moons, Galilean moons appearing as stars circling Jupiter in the sky. Too bad we'd all be dead by then. Meanwhile, sunscreen becomes obsolete. We'll fry anyway. Good news. NASA's schedule just got a lot simpler. No more moon missions needed. Oh, for many.